Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and continuing the topic of what? Of the BJT biasing. We've seen two. We've seen the, the, the fixed biasing and we've seen the emitter biasing, right? Yes. So, number three. Now, number three in order is the voltage divider biasing. Number three is what? It's the voltage divider biasing and it's also called the self biasing i believe and we'll check it in the book okay so i'll tell you then so voltage divider biasing for now okay so now why is this called a voltage divider so we see the first thing that we have is the same vcc is the supply the biasing supply you have your resistance connected in series with the collector and then you have this emitter resistance grounded when i say emitter resistance or collector resistance it is not the resistance of that terminal it is the resistance that is connected in series with that terminal okay so i may sometime you know uh, mix the things up but the thing is that this rc is the resistance connected in series with the collector terminal re is the series uh, the resistance connected in series with the emitter terminal yes yes now in place of rb so we don't have a simple rb over here but we have a combination of two resistances we have a combination of two resistances and they are like this this is r1 and this is r2 so have a look now we call it a voltage divider biasing why because the supply voltage is not being directly fed into the base it is being divided into two resistances r1 and r2 that is why this is called a voltage divider biasing right yes so so the thing is over here which current would flow ie current would flow which is equal to what which is equal to ic plus ib the base current would be the same you have ib ic the same collector current the rest of the things are the same a plus minus vbe voltage drop against this pn junction diode forward bias diode this is an npn transistor you know it from the from the direction of the arrow the arrow is going outwards the book says what not pointing in this is an npn right yes pnp is pointing inwards toward the base terminal the direction of the currents are opposite in that and then you have what the direction of the polarities would be opposite over here if you talk about vbe over there you would be talking about a veb so we, we're just taking the npn transistor you don't need to confuse it okay for the pnp you know what is the basic and what would be opposite you know that very well anyways so whenever you talk of the voltage divider biasing you would have to apply the Thevenin equivalent circuit this is something associated with the voltage divider and then the Thevenin equivalent circuit that is from the circuit analysis that is from the network theory so the basics of that you know very well yes i may not know it that well so i would just try to apply that Thevenin theorem over here fine yes so you have to so what do you do in the Thevenin theorem you you, you find the voltage not the Thevenin theorem you in the Thevenin equivalent circuit you find the what you find the voltage across some open circuit element right yes so what we'll do over here the voltage is dividing between r1 and r2 so vcc is divided vcc is divided first and then it is applied to the base terminal yes th that i've told you so first we find the Thevenin equivalent at the base terminal so basically what is happening is this is your vcc connected vcc is connected over here you have your r1 and then you have your r2 and then you have your ground yes so the thing is that you have to find your base terminal is somewhere connected over here so over here you have to find the Thevenin equivalent voltage and the Thevenin equivalent resistance right yes so what do we do to find the voltage you have to open circuit the terminals to find the voltage you have to open circuit the terminals so have a look uh, what do you do if you open circuit the voltage which means if you don't have any voltage over here you don't have any voltage vcc is zero vcc is if let's say zero so what do you have you would have these two to be in series you would have these two to be in series and the voltage if vcc is zero this would imply what that r1 and r2 are in series so this would imply from the voltage uh, uh, from that what is that called 
voltage divider rule voltage divider rule says what you're finding the voltage across the second element so vth would be what vth or let me write it over here that vth vth comes out to be what the total voltage applied the total voltage applied is what it's vcc multiplied by the resistance through which you are finding it so you're finding it through r2 so r2 and divided by the sum of the resistances so the sum of the total resistances is what it's r1 plus r2 so you found out with tevin now to find out to find out you are a r tevin and you do what you short circuit the supply to find V Tevin and you do what you open circuit the supply and to find out the I the R Tevin and you do what you short circuit the supply so have a look if if this is short circuited if this is let's say grounded as well so which means what have a look now what can you say now you say if this terminal is also ground this terminal is also ground r1 and r2 both are connected in between the ground this means what r1 and r2 are in parallel now yes so r1 and r2 are now acting in parallel so this means what i would write over here r1 is parallel with r2 which means what that you can write over here the r terminal R Tevin is what? It's R1 into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Is that okay? It is. Right? Yes. Now what do you do? So you have to, you draw the, so you replace the base circuit. The base circuit is this one. Replace it by what? By the Tevin equivalent circuit. So let me just, uh, uh, where should I draw it? Let me draw it over here. Let me draw it over here. So you have this as your, wait a minute, just wait a minute, this is your base terminal, this is your collector emitter. So the emitter has the same resistance like this over here. This is RE, right? The collector resistance and VCC. VCC and the resistance with the collector. Now for the base terminal, what you do? You replace it with the Thevenin equivalent. So have a look, you've got your R Thevenin over here. And you've got your DC plus minus a V Tevinen over here and this is grounded again. So this is your V Tevinen. So now this circuit, this circuit is your equivalent what? Your equivalent voltage divider circuit based on the Tevinen voltage and Tevinen resistances. Right? Yes, sir. Now what can you do? You can apply the KVL. So have a look. The input would be applied at what side? At this side. Of course, you have got the, the, the capacitors. Okay. Of course, you have got the capacitors. And where are they? So that you know very well. Uh, over here. The first one would be over here for the input signal. And the second one would be over here for the output signal. And we are talking about the DC analysis. So, so, so they are shorted out. And we don't just show them right so we have not shown them over here as well so if i apply the input kvl kvl to the input loop let's say i name it as input kvl so what do i have vcc minus icrc vcc minus icrc yes Oh, no, 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 no. Now, this is not included in the input side. Sorry, 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 sorry. Have a look, have a look. This is not included in the input side. I just made a mistake. Now, VCC is not included in the input side. Have a look. We, will, we can just go for the shortcut. We can just go on this side, right? So, which means that this is your IB. Now, we have got our source over here, right? We've got the VTAVN and source over here. So, we can just simply do it. I can just simply say VTAVN minus IB times R Tevinen. minus minus VBE minus IE times RE and IE is what IB plus IC right so I could write this like this directly IB plus IC times RE and this is equal to 0 so from here you can find the value of the base current from here you can find the value of the base current just let me open it up okay just let's say we do it v tevinen minus ib r tevinen minus vbe 
माइनस आई बी आर ई माइनस आई सी आर ई इज इक्वल टू जीरो वी तेविन माइनस आई बी स्टेक एन कॉमन आर तेविन माइनस आर ई माइनस वी बी ई माइनस आई सी आर ई इक्वल टू जीरो आई बी कम्स आउट टू बी वॉट द बेस करंट द बेस करंट कम्स आउट टू बी वी तेवन एंड माइनस वी बी ई माइनस आई सी आर ई डिवाइडेड बाई आर तेवन एंड माइनस आर ई इज दैट फाइन जस्ट लेट मी चेक जस्ट लेट मी चेक IB is equal to V7 and minus VBE. No, I have made a mistake somewhere. They have replaced. Well, IC. So, so, so we. So they are not considering IC as well. They are not considering IC. They have replaced IC by a beta plus one times IB. Talking of IB, okay. So if IC is beta plus one times IC is beta plus one times what IB. So you have V7 and uh minus vbe minus beta plus 1 times ib right and then the same thing minus ib r tevin and minus re equal to 0 so what do you have now v tevin and minus vbe Minus IB is taken common. You have uh, 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 beta plus one minus uh, R tevin and minus RE. And again, I believe I made a mistake. So IB is V tevin and minus VBE. V tevin and minus VBE divided by beta plus one minus R tevin and minus RE. No. Beta plus one is multiplied with R. E. Have a look over here. So, anyways, just I have just a little made a little confusion. But the thing is that this is wrong. Wait, okay. And and R seven and plus beta plus one times R. E. Would come from here. R seven and Plus beta plus one times a re. Just check the mathematical calculations. Just a little mistake, maybe somewhere. Doesn't matter. Now again, if I'm considering the the active mode of operation, so for the active mode of operation, I have what? I have I C. This is equal to beta times I B. So if I C is beta times I B, so I could just write it over here that I C what comes out to be. You can just put the value, and then of course you can do one manipulation as well that if beta plus one R E is far greater than R Tevin, and then you will say that beta plus one is approximately equal to beta, so the beta in the denominator and the numerator would cancel out, and your I C would come out to be approximately independent of the value of beta. Yes, yes. So this was about the input loop. Now, if we apply the KVL to the output loop, so what do we have? For the output loop, what do we have? We see C output loop. Basically, why do we apply this KVL? So we have the two things to find out. That is your IC is the output current, and we see E. This is your output voltage. So IC we find out through relation beta times IB, right? And then we see E we find out through what? <coughs> through the output KVL. So the if KVL is now applied to the output loop. So now what would we have? We would have a VCC minus ICRC. And this would be a plus minus VCE. So minus VCE and minus IB plus IC times RE, right? Minus uh, IE times RE. Let's say minus IE times RE. 
this is equal to 0. Now you have what? Your IE is approximately equal to IC. You have also seen from the previous video examples. So if IE is approximately equal to IC, so what do you have? You have VCC minus VCE and then you have a minus IC common. You have RC plus a re and this is equal to zero so have a look from here you can find out the value of ic so uh, 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 no wait we are not interested in the value of ic basically we are interested in the value of vce so vce comes out to be what uh, vce is vcc minus a ic times a rc plus re and is that fine it is it is it is yes yes so that is all about the voltage divider biasing so do you want me to do the examples in this video so maybe for the for the examples let's say we go into the next video in this video we discuss the uh, the stability of this voltage divider biasing all right or if i have any other point so let's say the stability factor what is the stability factor stability factor so the stability factor you need what you need an s that is 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta times the derivative of ib with respect to ic so ib uh, with respect to ic so for that you need the input kvl equation right yes so you derivate that with uh, differentiate that with respect to ic so i would just write it directly over here so the first term would be zero then you have a minus I B I C times what? R Tevinan. Yes, R Tevinan. Then again 0 for V B E. Right? And then for this you have what? Minus D I B D I C and then you have what? R C minus R E or what is this? R C minus R E. yes rc minus re right whatever it is you just need to you can just do it by yourself equate it to zero equate it to zero and find out the value of ib with respect to ic so this comes out to be what this comes out to be negative re upon r tevin and plus re right yes now you put it in that s you put it in that s and you do the simplification if you put it in that s and you do the simplification so s would come out to be one plus beta times r tevinan do the simplification for yourself okay plus re just take the simple lcm and then just do whatever is required get to this step re plus r tevinan now what can you do is you can say that 1 plus beta times r tevinan is far greater than r e this one 1 plus beta times r e would be far greater than r tevinan right yes i would write over here that 1 plus beta times r e is far greater than r tevinan yes and r tevinan is in itself a less value so just i will come to that in a uh, in a in a second okay so so for instance this one is ignored so which means that r tevinan could be ignored so what would we have on this basis and one thing i missed over here this is in the bracket as well okay so this is in the bracket so if this is over here so r tevinan is ignored one plus beta one plus beta would cancel out and this would come out to be what that the stability factor for this would come out to be r tevinan plus r e and this is divided by re so have a look have a look we have again reduced the stability factor again as as compared to one plus beta this is far less as compared to one plus beta and also you you would have seen in the previous video i believe we had the base resistance over here rb so have a look over here r tevinan is also less than rb r tevinan is also less than rb why because this is a parallel combination and in the parallel combination the equivalent of the parallel is less than the highest also 
right so our terminal is again less than rb and this term is also overall overall less than one plus beta so till now that we have studied so voltage divider biasing is the best configuration of uh, in terms of uh, stability isn't it so it is so i don't have anything uh, i believe uh, 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 what can we do is we can move on to the next video for the examples i say okay yes so i if i to start examples over here so then this can get boring so i will just let this portion be written over here these are the formulas and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll do this uh in the next video and one thing else let me talk about the transistor saturation current as well in this video let's say we talk of the transistor saturation so i say when we see e is equal to zero right so why do i say that why do i say that so just let me write it over here explain it shortly the thing is basically saturation current is what this could be the maximum allowable current for a particular design right so which means that the current that is either equal to the maximum current I C if that becomes equal to or if that becomes greater than the I C maximum for a particular design of a transistor then that is called as I C saturation and why is that called so have a look have a look for the output characteristics are what let's say this is I'm just considering it for one or let's say consider the multiple anyways so what do you have is let's say this was that reference 0.2 volts value over here have a look if we see is less than point uh, greater than 0.2 volts is the active region if it's less than 0.2 volts is the saturation region right which means to the left of this this region you have got your saturation region and below the point ib is equal to zero this one this one is your cutoff region right we are not interested in that so the thing is when we see e approaches to the left when it is very small when we see e is a very small so have a look the q point let's say over here this would be what in the saturation region isn't it like this it is so if you say what if you say that r is the voltage upon current uh, it is yes so if the voltage this is vce which is approximately equal to zero divided by the value of current so which means the resistance offered is zero the resistance offered is zero so which means what a very high value of current will flow high value of current will flow so that is what I call over here and this is the current that is flowing the high level of current that might be equal or greater than IC max. So that is the saturation current for a very low value approximately zero value over here I have not done it properly but for a very approximately zero value of VCE the current that flows is called the IC saturation. Let me finish this video over here in the next video we see examples on the voltage divider biasing. Till then take care. Goodbye.